So today I'm going to talk about LC oscillators. And we're going to analyze the simple LC oscillator and find out why, in fact, it oscillates. And that's going to tell us um, how it is that we make an LC circuit oscillate. So let's say we have this circuit. Um, it's got an inductor and a capacitor. And they're in parallel or in series. Uh, depends on how you interpret that. Um, you interpret the circuit. So we're going to say that there's a certain voltage across it, V. Uh, there's also a certain current through through it, I. Now, I've drawn it uh, up here with the top little terminal, uh, and that's and a bottom terminal. And that's pretty standard, because you're implying that you're going to connect this to the outside world. Um, but for the sake of this circuit, um, that's not important. So just assume that these are short circuits. This circuit is kind of existing on its own. There's no ground plane, there's no nothing. So if we just go back to our intro circuit theory and write out our differential equations to solve this circuit, we'd get C times dV dt plus 1 over L integral minus infinity to some time uh, V of t. And that V is the voltage across the capacitor, which is also the voltage across the inductor, dt equals zero. And we know that uh, this circuit, if we just solve it like this, um, we, could, we could solve it like this with separation of variables, but we have the Laplace transform available to us, and electrical engineers just love using the Laplace transform, so that's, that's what we're going to do. Um, so if we take the Laplace transform, it's just SC v, and now v is a function of s, minus, and this part is important, uh, c v at time 0. Uh, so we're assuming that the capacitor has some initial voltage across it. And we could say that there's some initial current and some initial voltage, but in general all we need is uh, one uh, degree of freedom, because that's all we have in our circuit. Uh, and then plus 1 over s l, since we're going to assume the current at time 0 is 0, is equal to zero. Well, we can factor this. We can take out a V of S, and we get SC plus 1 over SL equals C times V of Z, V0. Um, now we can factor it further and solve for VS. We just get VS is equal to C V at time zero divided by SC plus 1 over SL. But this is a little con inconvenient. We've got S's in numerators and denominators, so we're just going to multiply the top and the bottom uh, by S over S and by 1 over C divided by 1 over C. And that's just to make it look prettier. And we'll get uh, SV0 up top divided by S squared plus 1 over LC. And you might recall that this 1 over LC term shows up a lot. And we know 1 over square root of LC is just equal to omega naught. So 1 over LC is equal to omega naught. If you haven't seen this before, omega naught is referred to as the resonant frequency of the circuit. And it's very common. Um, well, if you look at this, uh, you can either decompose it with partial fractions, then use uh, the Laplace transform of the exponential. Or you can just recognize that this is the solution for, or this is the, in the Laplace transform of a cosine. So V of T is just equal to V naught, and I'm going re to replace V of zero with V naught just to make it more convenient. Uh, v naught times cosine of omega naught T. Beautiful. Um, so that is our entire circuit. So that is just our sim the solution of our LC circuit. So the voltage at time t is equal to the initial voltage, v naught times cosine of omega naught t. So the voltage will oscillate between plus and minus v naught. And the reason I included this v naught is it's actually very important what initial voltage is on your capacitor. Because if you only have a voltage of, say, v naught over 2, the amplitude of oscillation is only going to be half as much. This circuit can't oscillate without you putting energy into it first. And that energy can either be in the form of a voltage across the capacitor or a current through the inductor. They're equivalent. Um, OK, so we've analyzed the simple LC oscillator. But how do we actually make one? Um, well, we know a realistic circuit 
uh, we know an LC circuit isn't realistic in practice. We know, we're always going to have some parallel resistance with the capacitor and some series and some series resistance with the inductor. And I'm actually going to I'm actually going to draw out all the parasitics here. So we know with our inductor, we're always going to have some series resistance. That's because inductors are made out of metal. Metal always has finite conductivity. Um, we know we're going to have a capacitor as well. And that capacitor is always going to have some parallel resistance. So we're going to call this RL and this is RC. And this is what happens when you try to make uh, just a pure LC circuit. So if you just place an off-the-shelf inductor uh, in parallel with an off-the-shelf capacitor, this is what it's actually going to look like from a circuit's point of view. You're going to have some parallel resistance with the capacitor. And that's just from the leakage uh, between the capacitor place and the dielectric, because the dielectric has a finite conductivity. Uh, if it didn't, then we wouldn't have this parallel resistance. And we've got some series resistance for our inductor. Now, generally, capacitors are higher quality um, just in IC manufacturing than resistors. So this RC is generally neglected, and we're left with this circuit. Um, we've got a series inductor with a series resistor and a parallel capacitor. Um, well, this circuit's a little inconvenient to analyze uh, just because the differential equations for it are kind of awkward. Um, and we can't analyze it in a, the intuitive way that we'd like. So we do an impedance transformation, which I've gone over previously. Um, and we say that we've got some inductance, L prime. We've got some resistance in parallel with that, R prime. And R prime and L prime in general are not equal to L and R. And we've got some capacitance, which is unchanged, C. Um, and if you want to calculate L prime and R prime, uh, L prime is just equal to the initial inductance times 1 plus 1 over the quality factor squared. And the quality factor of the circuit is just equal to the series, uh, in, um, the series reactance divided by the series resistance. Uh, and that's just a measure of how much energy is stored in this circuit reactively versus how much is dissipated passively. Um, and we usually take this omega at some omega naught, and then we call this an approximation about omega naught. It's approximately equal about omega naught. And we say that r prime is just equal to r times 1 plus q squared. And so in reality, q is a function of frequency, and so r prime and l prime are going to be a function of frequency. But so long as our frequency doesn't differ too much around omega naught, um, then we can say that, well, these uh, values are approximately uh, not functions of frequency. And that lets us analyze it much more easily. Well, OK, now we've got uh, an, L, an RLC parallel circuit. Um, but we want it to just be an LC circuit. And you might say, well, there's no way to do that, obviously. We can't just get rid of the resistor. Um, but we could if hypothetically we had this value this resistor over here with value minus r prime then the two resistors in parallel would cancel each other out and we'd be left with our pure lc circuit l prime and c prime now i'm not saying that we can do that the reality is that we in fact can uh, but if we could do this, then we could get a circuit which we know will oscillate um, with, frequency, or with frequency omega naught, which is equal to 1 over square root of L prime C. And the equation for oscillation is just V naught times cosine of omega naught T, where V naught was the initial voltage across the capacitor. So if we could have... Uh, a negative resistor. If we could figure out how to make one, uh, then we could force this circuit to oscillate so long as there's an initial voltage across the capacitor. And in the next video, that's what I'm going to talk about. How do we actually make that negative resistor?